Okay, here we go. Let's go right into what's new in Brave Writer. Are you excited? So here's what's happened. Over the years, one of the comments that we get from people when they contact us is, how do I schedule all this? How do I make sense of what my kids are learning? How do I know they're learning? You know, you do a jot it down project with a child and you ask yourself, how do I know that that child is growing as a writer? Or you say to yourself, well, we worked on it a little this week. Does it count? Uh, did I do enough? Did we move the needle enough? How many of you feel like that? Some of you are type A moms wishing that you had a really clear schedule. Others of you are like me, maybe more type B. You want to be able to see what you are learning and then check it off when you see it happening. So you may not be planning ahead, but you're doing what I like to call planning from behind, giving yourself credit for what you've accomplished. So how many of you fall into that type A or type B mom? But all of you are looking for structure and tools to help you do that within the special sauce of Brave Writer. Here's the thing. I've been resisting giving you scheduling tools because I know what scheduling does. Can I tell you what scheduling does? It is like booking a date with self-deprecation. You are going to someday in the future look back at all the things you planned to do that didn't get done because the baby threw up, the dog got sick, you had a dental appointment, uh, your husband got a day off and you decided to go to the beach. All those plans that are in the future, when they don't happen, we get to look back and feel guilty. So to me, scheduling just for the sake of planning out a whole bunch of stuff can often be like booking a date with your future self so that you can turn your gaze backward and say, gosh, I'm really bad at this. We didn't get it done. We didn't complete it. So I have resisted giving you a typical schedule like, okay, here's the calendar. Here are all the pages you should read. Here's how much copy work you should do. Here are the days you do it on. Hear what I'm saying? So last year, we looked at the arrow and the boomerang and we thought, what are parents really asking for? They're asking to know what were the concepts in our minds that we thought we were communicating to you that you were passing along to your children. We also knew that you wanted to think like a week at a time, maybe not a year or a month, but could you meaningfully assign activities to specific days, you know, within reason, like you could be flexible if Tuesday you suddenly decided to do your poetry tea time on Wednesday because Tuesday the kids got involved in a documentary, you could move it. But you weren't acting like all Tuesdays for the rest of time had to be poetry tea time. So we thought about all that and we created this little progress tracker for skills and a weekly planner for the activities in the arrow. And what we saw is a surge of confidence in our Arrow and Boomerang users. Suddenly, parents were able to read books, understand what our goals were for the writing and the reading, and then able to slot in those practices like copy work and dictation into the days of the week. And then you could move them if you needed. We saw such success with that. We, we thought, well, we have to now. Think about how we can do this for our other products. So today, the big unveiling is we have created a week in focus planner and a skills tracker for Jot It Down. Now, Jot It Down is our, is our writing projects program for kids who are five to eight. And every month there is a specific writing project. So the first month is all about fairy tale narration. Another month we have um, we have you working on, I'm going to go to the next one, going to the art museum and appreciating art. Another month, we have you making what we call an animal mini book. And each of these writing projects has a goal. In fact, what you may not understand is at the five to eight-year-old level, we are already forecasting what kind of skills they need to be successful writers in college. That's right. 
we don't just give you a time killing writing assignment that you do until your kids are ready for serious writing. The research, the diversity of, of um, source materials, the revision process, the expanding your thinking, all of that summary paraphrase is happening at the youngest level. But we found out that you didn't know that that you didn't have as much clarity about what we were doing as we thought we had. The Jot It Down Planner. It is a week in focus planner and a skills tracker. Now, before you even ask, yes, we are doing these for partnership writing and faltering ownership as well. Those are our three current products that are designed to give you 10 writing projects and all of the language arts practices that go with it. So we talk about art appreciation, reading books, watching movies, poetry, tea time in those products. We also give you a series of oral practices, memorization, recitation, oral reports, and then we give you the writing projects. And right now, I have found out, talking to customers, my team has found out, that you don't all know how to meaningfully implement them like the three ring circus that it is. So we have created this new tool and Jot It Down is coming out in February right now, today. In fact, this moment, partnership writing will come out in the middle of March and then the faltering ownership planner and tracker will come out in April. So I want you to know those are coming. So let's walk through it together, shall we? Um, so here's the way that we describe it. Type A parents who want to plan and type B parents who want to track and type C parents who just want some help, we've got you. Now it's easier than ever to use our Jot It Down program. Introducing the Week in Focus Planner and the Writing Skills Tracker for every project, each one. So whereas the arrow and boomerang have the same guide for any arrow or boomerang that you purchase, for Jot It Down, partnership writing and faltering ownership for our writing projects programs, we have custom designed the planning page and the tracker for each project. That means these are 20 pages plus in length. I just want you to think about that. There are 10 projects. You're going to get a planner and a tracker for each project. So here's what's really cool. At the top, I'm gonna to show you now an example and we're gonna walk through it together just for fun. So let's say you're doing the fairy tale project in Jot It Down. The week in focus that you're gonna look at for planning has at the top a one, two, three, and four. Why? Because most of our projects last for a month. So you're just gonna color in or check off the bubble for whichever week you're in, right? So that's gonna start you out really well. You'll know now that you're gonna print four week in focus plans for each project and you're gonna decide which week you're in. You're gonna put the date and which children are participating. Now, as you know, in Brave Rider, that could be multiple kids. Jot It Down can be done with a variety of students altogether, not just the one child. So you have a space to put that in. Then on the planning side, we include all three parts of Jot It Down. The Brave Writer Lifestyle, I want you to see that. Oh, the lighting, there you go. Poetry, tea time, movie, nature, art, and music. And over on the side, you get to decide if you're saving it for later or if you have completed it. There's a little clock and a little checkbox. And you can decide which ones of those you're going to do this week. Now just from me, I don't recommend doing poetry, tea time, movie, nature, art, and music every week. So you might decide you're in week two and you haven't watched a movie yet this month, so you're gonna do it in week two, but you're not gonna do it in week three. So in week two, you're just gonna check done. In week one, you might pick save for later. See what I mean? So it gives you a way to kind of keep in your face, in your imagination. Oh yeah, these are options I always have. And the information about how to implement them is inside the Jot It Down program. Then we have oral practices, and I don't know how many of you follow through on these. Recitation, memorization, wordplay, narration, storytelling, and one-on-one -on -one time. 
And inside each of those, oh, I'm so terrible at this. If you can see, there is a save for later, an in progress, and a done box. That means you can choose not to do some of them. Or perhaps you're in progress working on memorization in weeks one, two, and three, and then week four is when you check done. Let me get a sip of water. Makes sense? You hear what I'm saying? And then under that, we have the writing project. So now you're going to read the description, collect materials, select fairy tale, and identify versions of the fairy tale you're reading. Then you're going to jot down an oral narrative, create a visual narrative, read the narration aloud, and celebrate. Obviously, you don't do all of those in one week. You're going to do some of those in each week and you will check them off as you complete them. The other side of the planner then is a daily planner, something you do each day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and even the weekend. Why? Because I know you. You are homeschooling constantly. Just because you picked out all the fairy tales to read for, you know, the three little pigs doesn't mean you're confining it to Monday through Friday. You might read The Three Little Pigs on a Saturday afternoon. I want you to get credit for that or to plan for it if you know it's coming. It is not meant to guilt you. It is meant to give you the opportunity to see what there is that you can be doing and to slot it into the spaces where it would be most suitable to your life today. Here's what's great. These are printables. So let's say you get part way in and you suddenly find, oh no, this week is a wash. You can just rip it up, throw it away and print a new one next week. There is nothing obligating. This is just meant to help your brain see around the edges of what these projects can do. So that's the purpose of the planning tool. The second page then for every project is called the skills tracker. The skills tracker. What do we mean by this? Brave Writer envisions that your child will be learning a certain amount of writing skill with every project you do with us, whether it's in a class or it's in one of our programs. But it occurred to us that perhaps you're not aware of all the value that you are imparting to your kids when you play with fairy tales. You might think, oh, well, we're just doing this because they're five years old. Fairy tales aren't that important when you get older. Not so. As I often say to parents who ask me, fairy tales are not juvenile. You know there are PhD dissertations written on every fairy tale ever known to humankind. Fairy tales are simply source material that children really enjoy. And so what we do is we help you discover what academic writing skills they are getting simply by being immersed in fairy tales. Is that not the coolest thought? So I want to give you an example. We divide the skills tracker into base writing skills and specific skills. Can you see that? The base writing skills are the things that you see and jot it down. The topic is fairy tale. What's the research that you're doing? Well, you're checking out books. You're watching movies. So I give you a place to write that down. What's the content of what you're doing? Well, there's the oral narrative that you're jotting down and there is the visual narrative that you're creating. That is the practice of narration. The way Charlotte Mason or classical education talks about it, it's happening in the bathtub while your child is reciting The Three Little Pigs. It's happening when your kids dress up in dress up clothes and act out The Three Little Pigs. I'm giving you a place to note that that's what's going on. Then there's the revision moment. So you've written all of their narratives, they've created these visual representations. How are you gonna arrange it into a book? How do you sequence the stories? Did you include an edited by for the author? Did you add a cover? And then publishing, did you bind it into a book? Did you read it to an interested audience or to the child? These are the base writing skills that you are getting by working on this fairy tale project with your kids. But there's more. 
there are specific writing skills that are part of this jot it down experience that are baked right in and I want to make sure you know what they are. Things like reading diverse sources, identifying points of view, who's telling the story. So in The Three Little Pigs, is the wolf telling the story? Is some omniscient narrator telling the story? How does it change if the brick laying pig told the story versus the straw building pig? What about comparing and contrasting versions of the stories? Whether you have one where the pigs roll down a hill into the fair or they get eaten. And who's writing those? This is what you do in college, by the way. And here your children are doing it at the level of ages five, six, seven, and eight. Can you identify a hero, the protagonist? Can you identify the villain, the antagonist? What about the narrative only opens with an action and then we get a little background and then we watch the story develop to the climax? How does it resolve? This is all happening while you're working on this project. Can you name the moral of the story? Can you interpret the story and retell it in your own voice? These are the writing skills coming through our fairy tale writing project. It's not just topic, sentence, and a paragraph. We are actually cultivating the critical thinker, the literary analyst in your seven-year-old child. And they think they're just learning a fairy tale. But here's my favorite part of the skills tracker. Are you ready? <laughs> and I'm hoping this helps you tremendously. I have built an academic vocabulary skills word bank for you. Words that will show up in a written narrative of your experience that you can turn into a year-end state evaluator or your charter school supervisor, or you can write and send to your husband or your mother-in-law via email to show them, you know, what a badass educator you actually are. So here's an example of what's in the skills word bank. Point of view, compare and contrast, sequence, hero, protagonist, theme, plot, interpretation, narrative, antagonist, villain, diversity of texts, moral of the story. You can take that word bank and use all these skills that you read and then write your own narrative. You know, Johnny, age eight, discovered point of view when we did research into the fairy tale Rapunzel. We began with Grimm's version and we identified the hero, AKA protagonist, blah, blah, blah. Then we compared and contrasted this version with Tank to Disney and discovered it was being told from a different point of view, etc. You are able then to become the kind of person that you want to be in your homeschool, both flexible, to meet the needs and demands of your children, but also conscientious about skill development and planning, whether you're planning in advance or you're giving yourself credit for what you've accomplished from behind. And these trackers and planners are printables. So if you screw one up, you throw it away and print another one. If you wanna revise it or cross something else, cross something out or add to your own skills, there's space to do it or you can just turn it over and write on the back, hey, I identified four more skills. My son was noticing alliteration. This antagonist reminded her of an antagonist from another fairy tale, and we made a compare and contrast list of all the ways the big bad wolf was really similar to fill in the blank. Some other antagonist from another fairy tale. Maybe the wolf in Red Riding Hood and the Three Little Pigs, and you do a compare and contrast about how they are similar and dissimilar. That's the stuff that's going to emerge when you're focused on writing skills and you're paying attention to this meta level of learning. But I realized we discovered that some of this might be a little bit um, foreign to you. It's not that you can't do it, you just haven't thought this way yet. So the mission of Brave Writer this year in 2020 and going forward is to support you with the training you need to be the educator you dream of being, to be the parent you desire to be, the kind, loving guide, not the harsh taskmaster trying to keep up with a program where you don't even really understand what the goals of that program are. 
and you get to modify this. This is something that you are able to use flexibly. So that's what it looks like for the fairy tale one. So I want to read you now the, um, the second project because it's a little different. The second project in Jot It Down is called Art Appreciation. So the Art Appreciation Planner looks very similar at the top. We have the Brave Writer Lifestyle and the Oral Practices. But then the writing project is specific to art. We're going to read the description in the Jot It Down program. We're going to find an art museum or exhibit. We're going to collect all these materials. And then we are going to assign the field trip to a date. We're going to plan our 60 to 90 minute stay. We are going to pack a lunch. And then we're going to celebrate by picking a favorite painting postcard for each child. So that's your planner. But what are the skills that your child is learning through art appreciation? How does this relate to being a good writer, right? Well, instead of base writing skills, your child is becoming a keen observer, which is critical to quality writing. So first, you're going to notice by picking a single work of art to observe, to keenly observe. Then you're going to observe. You're going to have an initial impression, your mood. And we give you these little uh, emojis that you can just color in. You can say to your child, when you look at the painting, which one of these does it evoke in you, right? Then you're going to ask your child. You're going to look at the content. Does it tell a story? And if it does, can your child tell it? Can you create a visual narrative? Now, some abstract paintings like Mark Rothko, the answer to that is no. The painting is not telling a story. Guess what? That is a valid reaction. So then we get to say, what is it for then? If it's not telling a story, what is the point of this painting? What mood, what, it, what inspiration is it evoking? Then you can play some of the games and we have a whole bunch of games in Jot It Down to play when you're in an art museum. So here are the boxes you can check off after you've played them. And then finally, we have our word skills bank down here. And on the other side, here are the specific skills, and I'm just going to read them to you. View diverse paintings. Identify types of paintings. Realistic, impressionistic. Something from the Middle Ages. Something from the Renaissance. Compare and contrast the styles. What do we notice about, you know, the Dutch painters of this era versus Van Gogh? One looks like photographic quality and the other is very abstract, very impressionistic. Um, did your child express a personal response? Can you count identifiable elements? One of the treasure hunts we do in a museum is to pick an item like wheels or cherubs and count them all up, see how many showed up in the paintings you looked at that day. Can you notice the quality of the brush strokes? And then we have a little list to pick a favorite. Why did you like it? What is the tone or mood? What is the light source? What feeling do you think the painter wants us to have? Does it tell a story? Would you like to draw it? Like that. To help you start to see that your kids are learning to encounter visual experiences, personal experiences, books they read, and they're always going to be asking these questions. Did you like it? What's the tone and mood? Where is the meaning source? What do you think, the painter, the writer, the movie, t uh, the filmmaker, what do you think they want us to take away from this? Do you see how you're training them in that academic mind through going to an art museum? And in the skills word bank for art, these are some of the vocabulary words I'm giving you to play with. Domain-specific vocabulary, cultural literacy, mood, realism, brush strokes, explicit versus implicit meaning. Landscape, identifying colors, myth, and so on. In other words, for each writing project, we are trying to help you build a vocabulary and a way of seeing so that you are able to quantify the learning that your children are getting. It's happening whether you quantify it or not, by the way. It's just I know the reassurance and the power that comes from naming the experience your children are having. It helps you with confidence and a sense of being 
on track. And the number one complaint I get from homeschool parents is, how do I know I'm doing enough? How many of you ask that question? How do I know I'm doing enough? Well, you can never know if you have nothing to measure, right? It's like saying, how do I know I'm pouring enough milk into these pancakes? Well, you know if you have a measuring cup and someone told you you need a cup of milk, but you don't know if you're just left with the vague impression that milk is probably a part of pancake making. So we're trying to help you with that. We're getting by some of this vague experience that we know is working, we know it's enriching your family, but you don't know it yet. I want you to know it. And I want you to speak with confidence. So let's say you're talking you know, to your state evaluator at the charter school, and they say, well, I love that you're reading fairy tales, but have you taught them the paragraph format yet? You can come back and say, actually, we have explored the narrative arc. We have compared and contrasted diverse source texts. My child can identify the protagonist and antagonist, and she represented all of that content in a paragraph of her own writing that is an interpretation of this fairy tale based on multiple sources. You say that to your evaluator, and I believe it will be a mic drop moment. <laughs> she's not going to be hung up on topic sentence. She's going to see that the academic journey is alive in your child and that that paragraph that child wrote is worthy of appreciation. Do you hear where I'm going? And this is literally the growth that we are trying to incite in our Brave Writer community. Homeschooling is a radical departure from traditional education. It is a radical departure. This morning in our staff meeting, we were talking, uh, and Dawn brought this up. She's on this Facebook um, comment section and is the uh, director of our publications. She's like, the challenge of being a home educator is that it's a career, but it is combined with your parenting, right? Isn't that the truth? Usually, if you have a career, you leave your house, you go somewhere, and you work with other clients, and then you come home and you parent your kids. But you're doing this completely unique thing. You're not a teacher at a school working with someone else's kids. You're living in your home, trying to build these connective tissues of love and bonding, while imparting an educator's dream, which is a robust education to children. Brave Writer wants you to know that our cutting edge philosophy of education is built from the understanding that you are a parent first. We start with your parenting toolkit and we enrich it with the academic life. And these tools are meant to help you do both simultaneously to reassure you that you are doing the educator's task within the bonds of love that a parent wants to have with their children. That's what we're about, and that's what these tools are for. You got it? So it's 2020. This is our 20th anniversary year, and you can expect the whole year to be like this. My podcast right now, all about this, educating, parenting, and being an amazing adult, an awesome adult. We are rolling out new tools. We have something coming for you in June that will blow your freaking mind. A whole thing that's gonna change your life. So I'm just seeding that now, but this is a tease. This is what's coming. More support, more hands-on training, more sense of security that you are not only doing enough, you're doing the right things. Because certainly you can increase quantity and still not grow. We want quality, we want depth, we want intentionality, whether it's from the front end and planning it or from the back end and noticing it. We want your life to express in a meaningful way the riches of education you're imparting to your dearly loved children. And it's happening already if you're using our products. Now we just want you to notice and to relax, to rest with confidence that yes, you are doing exactly what you need to be doing. Make sense? The Jot It Down Planner is out now. So let me give you the details. Let's say you already own Jot It Down. You bought it even this morning, right? Or you bought it six weeks ago, or you bought it in the fall, or you bought it three years ago. You can go buy this planning tool, which is more than 20 pages, for 
11.95 right now just as a separate download okay so you just go and buy it and you've got it and then all you have to do is print it and you will have it you can print as many of the pages as you want obviously for the week in focus planner you'll print it four times per project okay because each project is about a month long so one skills tracker but maybe four sheets for each of those week in focus planning tools if you have not yet bought the jot it down program and that is this tool i'm going to show you it this tool right here you can go purchase that now and this tracker is included we bumped up the price just a little bit to accommodate the tracker because design work it costs us something to make it but not considerably so either buy the program and get it thrown in or buy it independently individually both are available right now starting this very minute this is also true of the bundle so if you buy our jot it down bundle starting today it will automatically be included if you bought the jot it down bundle previously you will need to buy the planner and tracker separately here's what i want you to know we're happy to help you in any way if some of this was confusing or you have a question go to help at bravewriter.com that is an email address where my support staff is waiting to serve you and make all of this very plain and logical and clear you may have some extenuating circumstance i don't know about <laughs> so let us know for those of you looking to print our products we use the homeschool printing company and that's exactly what it's going to look like just like this and this is all their printing job they are hands down the least expensive of any printing option out there and they support homeschoolers specifically i cannot recommend them highly enough i've met the man who founded the company ethical integrity such a service so brave writers products come as a pdf and if you buy jot it down the program the tracker planner pdf is a separate download in the same email so you will see multiple downloads make sure you download everything so that you have everything you need make sense here's the thing and here's what you need to know we could spend the money to provide you these tools in print but our prices would be a lot higher because the problem with print is storage volume shipping and handling and not everyone needs print copies not only that i cannot touch the prices of printing that you can get from the homeschool printing company literally they are cheaper than what i can get trying to print for myself so we made a business decision to allow you to have our products at what asks us to produce them what is you know the right price for brave writer and then you can decide maybe you only want to print the tracker and the planner and you can just read this on your ipad by the way it looks gorgeous on an ipad right and not only that aren't we living in a time when we want to spend less money on paper and spend less time cutting down trees so for brave writer the print free option needs to exist and then we'll let you take advantage of this incredible deal that the homeschool printing company offers and i want them to be hugely successful because they are providing such an incredible service to our community i'm going to go for three more minutes you're welcome to hop off and start shopping if you're done but i want to address an issue that's going on right now in home education we are noticing in the charter school system for instance in california the steady creep 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 of encroachment on a homeschooler's right to educate the way she sees fit or he sees fit in california charter schools are now starting to require a certain amount of work a certain type of work a certain qualification of accredited teachers to be able to teach in order to release funds to homeschoolers now that's problematic to me because the point of view that i have as a home educator and as a business owner is this if the schools were so successful at what they were doing why would there be a mo movement of people leaving the schools to do their own thing at home so why would we then want to build a program that matches all the certifications and credentials of schools and ask you to do the same thing at home does that even make any sense 
Home education counts on the idea that being an accredited teacher is not the key to successful instruction. Su successful instruction between a parent and a child comes through a completely different mechanism. The bond of love, the ability to nuance and tailor make the education to the child, the capacity of the parent educator to grow alongside the child and harness a mutually beneficial education, the possibility of drawing from a variety of streams, not just educator approved textbooks. For instance, in my co-op, nurses taught biology. Do you know how much richness they brought to those dissections, talking about when they attended a surgery or how they administered medication and worked with sick patients versus a biology teacher whose only real experience with that science was through the model of education? Or how much our kids got from someone whose photography skills had made him the photographer of people like Bob Dylan. We had a guy like that in my co-op. When he taught photography, it wasn't because he had gotten his teacher certification. It was because he was a master photographer. Homeschoolers know this. And the reason our education model around writing is so effective is we hire writers, published authors, people for whom writing is their core identity because we have something to say about writing that you don't get when you major in English. It's a different lens. And if we are going to grow in both the academics, you know, meeting those sort of college application demands and providing this robust, rich, deep, wide experience of learning, we need to trust that what we're doing that's so radically different is more effective. We don't get there by implementing the methods of school. We get there by pioneering new methods that take our role as a parent and our role as an educator fully into account at all times. Got it? So that's what Brave Writer is about. This is what we are doing. And I'm here to tell you, you know, I home educated in the 90s and early 2000s. It may be that this new generation has to protest again, has to stand up for their rights again, has to be brave enough to put their own funds, not state funds, behind the education you want for your kids, like we did, because that's what homeschooling is. And I, for one, am not interested in public education taking it over. And I don't think you are either. So that's our help. That's what we're trying to help you do. We're trying to help you quantify what you need to feel secure so you don't run back to a system that you already don't believe works well enough. So you can stay the course and have confidence that you are doing right by your kids and doing enough. All right, thanks for joining me today. The Jot It Down Planner and Tracker is available. Go buy it, tell your friends. Oh, little teaser, Faltering Ownership is going to have something for your students, not just you as a parent. So, be ready. Good stuff coming in Brave Rider. Thanks for joining me. Bye, everybody.